from now. Right, so uh, hello everyone. Welcome to Citopia. Welcome to Citopia, today. And today is Monday 20th. It's already Monday, so actually it doesn't make any difference for me at all now. So now we have uh, two cave divers from Malaysia. And we've got uh, Mr. Lee Kenley and Eric Tans. And also we have uh, many people in Malaysia, many cave divers in Malaysia. I think from what I'm looking at in the, uh, in the list right now, we got at least about 10 cave divers. So we, everybody welcome to share, right? So then Ilik and, and also we have Dr. Asha, also he will also sharing experience of the, on the expedition in Malaysia. Right, so, เอ่อวันนี้นะครับเรามีคุณอิลิกแทนนะครับแล้วก็มีคุณเลียคินลี่นะครับเรามีดรอาซาที่จากมาจากมาเลเซียนะครับจะพูดถึงเกี่ยว
this is the entrance of one of the mines actually. So it's combined with the cave. So the entrance is the cave, but some part have been digging, like people do some mining here. You can see some bridge here, some stairs, some leftover wooden stuff inside here. So let me find some video. This one. So in the old day, we only got the GoPro. So may not be a very good video. So this is the entrance inside the cave, uh, inside the mines. Actually it's a cave, but the people, they're digging out some part and it becomes a mines. So doctor coming down, only two of us. We carrying the free diving boy just for uh, like safety and to carry our tank. So we didn't finish this cave and then it's, uh, it's this, this mines I think. Uh, we still have a, have a, how to say, I mean, still can push forward. We will come back, I mean, after this COVID. And we also discover another we call the fish cave. So can you guys see the video? Yes, can see, but a little bit. Okay. I mean, lagging or like shaking? Mm. Okay, it's smooth. Uh, so this is one of the entrance to the cave. How, how cold is the water? Uh, not cold. I think it's quite... Eh, it's okay. See, I didn't wear anything. Just normal shirt. I think maybe around 28. Yep. So the water visibility is not, is not so okay. And then there is a flow below here after we go inside. So I think this time we are still very... I mean, it's a, we are just started to do cave explorations. So a bit we are a bit conservative. So we didn't further our explore here. But I, we believe down there, they should have some cave. So we will come back next time. So this explore we've been doing five years ago. Sir. So basically, this is the about the north part we have explored. Actually, there's few other location we discover, but the the result is not so okay yet. So I let to doctor Doctor Azar to to say something about this area. Hello, doctor. <laughs> I'm not sure. I can see his screen. Yeah, doctor. Doctor is mute. Uh. Okay. Let me. Hello, doctor. You want to ask something? Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Doctor Asa, I we we cannot hear you. We cannot hear you. Can you can you try? You mute. You have mute. Okay. Uh, ah yeah. 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 We can hear you now. Can you? Uh, can ah, you... Okay. Okay. I'm okay now. Yeah. Um, well, if I can add uh, our exploration to the north part, uh, that's the same limestone that you get into Satun and all the way north, I think, in the peninsula Thailand. Uh, these are the older limestone. I think these are the Silurian, uh, Devonian limestone. Uh, quite similar to the one that you get in Krabi. The only thing that we found uh, here that the, the cave do not allow so much of uh, uh, penetration. There's always uh, uh, there's not enough. Uh, there's no large enough uh, space for us to get through. Okay, uh, so that was one uh, that we uh, we found. 
then the, this area uh, has also been mined before for tin. Uh, that we found that uh, you have uh, we have uh, been able to penetrate the old mine, but uh, because the way they mine, in fact, what they do is that between chambers they break the wall down, and then they use that wall to dump the floor. So uh, it end up with uh, the floor of the wall are made of rubble from the broken uh, wall that they have uh, down. So uh, in fact, most of the cave, uh, the water level is very shallow. It's about uh, three to four meters at the most. So uh, that was uh, one of the, the main problem that we had on the, the, uh, on the, in the northern uh, part of uh, Peninsula Malaysia. So this is uh, the footage uh, in the mines. Uh, I, I saw the foot, yeah, I saw the footage in the mine. Uh, okay, uh, as you can see, uh, the, the, it goes from chamber to chamber, and where they broke through was where is the former wall, and when they broke the wall, they dumped the the broken rock onto the the floor that uh, has been. Uh, uh, that they were before. So uh, it doesn't allow uh, deep uh, uh, any the older floor uh, has now been covered by uh, broken blocks. Okay. So okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So I will okay. continue another yeah. another part. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me share another one is Lembing. So another one I would like to share is uh, Sungai Lembing. So Sungai Lembing is a very old mine and one of the deepest mines in the world. So it used to be, I mean, to do the tin quality. So after they abandoned, so this area had been started to be I mean, developed to attract more tourists. So there's a waterfall, museum, and so on. But people here, they never go to explore the mines. So after we gather, I mean, we talked to Dr. Azar and Dr. Azar has suggested, I mean, there's uh, abandoned mines here. So we try to go to explore. We've been explored here quite many times. So you will notice the, you will notice the, the picture here with Eric and the picture of me below and the Pollock Tunnel. So this Pollock Tunnel is one of the tunnel that have been mined illegally. So this entrance is a bit small. For the right hand side with Eric and me, this is the official, the so called the company. How say they, they make the mine. So inside here, so the entrance uh getting bigger and then the structure is more stable. So this is the, the line they use, the pipeline that people take the water inside here to for their daily use. So this one is the illegal mines that we talk about. So for the official mines, the water there the, is not so clear. So we've been dived there and then we go to deep about 50 meters and we lay the line about two to 300 meters. But due to the visibility and the temperature, it's too high. The temperature is about 30 degrees Celsius. I will show you the video later. So we feel like the water is still under oxidation. So it's not so suitable to dive. So then we continue to explore the illegal mines. Although it's a bit small, the entrance, we managed to find uh, the chamber that lead to other pathway about 25 to 26 meter down there. So we do some preparation. So let me see. So this is the visibility that you can see. This is from the we so called the official. Eh, this is not the no this one, not this one. Wait, uh, not this one. Uh, This one, okay. This is the entrance to the mines. They, I say the company official 
how to say official company made tunnels. But here the width is start getting clear is about 30 meter. But although at 30 meter, you can see the, the width is still not so okay. But at least it's a bit clear, but the water temperature is about 30 degrees Celsius. And you can smell like the, the ferrous kind of an oxidation smell in the water. So it's very deep. We touched about 50 meters. As I say, we lay the line about two to 300 meters and still going on. But due to the weeds and the water, we feel like not so comfortable to continue to dive here until we find other better location. What kind of mine is it? So these are tin mines. Okay. So you can see a lot of large timber supporting on the top. It's very big. And do you need like official authorization to go inside? Uh, for this part, it's not. We have been talked to the local, not say local. We've, we've talked to the museum and the people there to get the attention that we are doing the exploration here. So they are aware we are coming here. So for the official one, not the official one, it's the illegal one. So in the illegal one, of course, the, the passage is not so big as the official tunnel, the, the company. So this is the, a bit small, but we managed to find the, the chamber that start to lead to the location that we can dive from. You can see here, at this chamber, you can see there is a four passage, left, right, and in the front. So there is a, I just have explored in the front, but this part left and the right, I haven't go yet. So, and the top part is still can go up. The, the wish easily get disturbed. You just go in for a while and you come back, the wish will gone. So this step is about 25, 26 meter and definitely will get decor. How deep it was in the chamber that you just show? Uh, the official one is the deepest part. I mean, according to the the book, I mean, it's about seven hundred meter. For the illegal one, we have been discussed. I mean, no, we are getting the information from the locker, so it's about eight floor. Mm. So each floor is about, I think, fifteen or twenty meter. I cannot remember already. So about ten meters. So this twenty six meter, maybe two floor or three floor below the water. Yep. But the total flow is about F flow here. Deepest mines in the world. Okay. Yes, uh, deepest mine, 700 plus meter. So this is like a chaff mine or a tunneling on the side? Uh, this doctor can explain better. Yeah, I pass to the doctor. Uh, let me unmute the doctor first. This is a lot mine. In fact, sorry. Okay, can, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, okay. Uh, this is a load mine. Uh, it was owned by the Pahang Consolidated Company Limited. It was actually the biggest mine in the British Empire in the, at the turn of the century. In fact, they were the, 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 the main producer of tin. Now, in that whole area, there are mines which were uh, owned by the company and they are also mined owned by the local. I mean, illegally uh, mined by the local. Now, the mine by the company was officially, officially closed in about 1983. So you are dealing with about 40 years uh, of uh, uh, non-working uh, non of the mine. But a sec certain sector has been open for tourism. Uh, the, the, section, the section that initially uh, explored were the private mine. Uh, because the local were able to tell us more. Uh, in fact, most of the workers in the in the company mine uh, were not were no longer around uh, now. But the private mine, they 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 have been to tell us where to go, how to go, and uh, even help us to get uh, uh, offers to, to to bring our our tanks in. Uh, the advantage of the old mine was that. Uh, it, it was used, uh, it's still been used for water supply. 
So it means that they have blocked all the edit uh, 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 except for that particular, particular one. So that there was no bed that can come in and use that place to, uh, to, uh, to rest. Uh, so it means that the water is basically clear compared to the, uh, the, the one that was owned by the company. Now, because it was a load mine, they were following the load. So there were a series of uh, darts and edits. Eh? So the darts are all connected. Uh, and and the, the, uh, the, you have to go for one level. And then when they hit the, the, the load, they will dig through the load until they get, until they, they cannot uh, mine anymore. Then they go either downwards or upwards. Uh, and that's where you have a, a base of, uh, of, of, of tunnels and edits. Eh? Uh, now, because they need to support the, the wall, so they use a lot of timber. Now, over time, the timber has uh, rotted in places, so you do get a lot of uh, uh, killing, crashing down, and uh, collapsing, and so on. So, uh, but uh, we think we found some of the better places and still safe to die. Whereas other places, we they advise us to be very careful. Uh, we rather not do that uh, uh, as part of the first adventure into, into exploration into that area. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Just, 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 just one quick question right now is since we are talking about the mine is uh, when, when you dive into the mines, uh, what what are the the differences compared to major cave, and, and what do you think that we have you have to be aware of and compared to to, to the, the risk compared to the, the cave diving that we did? So, okay, uh, for me the, the the thing is that uh, because we are we are dealing with uh, with, with areas that is uh, uh, cut through and then supported by by timber. Um, wall collapse and ceiling collapse are far more noticeable here than in a natural cave. I think that, that's the one that, that, that strikes me the most. Uh, Lee, yeah. yeah, of course, uh, you can see example this one, the, the collapse timber as Dr. say. So it's just in, just in the nice, say just coincidence, so the, the timber collapse. And then also the the inside the structure the uh, they they dig to say how to say they have they have cut the stone, so some part when the our bubble hit the above then the loose lock is start to falling down, so you definitely need to wear the mask and you need to wear the helmet if not the the rock will hit your head. And then also the poisonous poisonous gas maybe, because here we can smell uh, like a. Lot, I mean, not say it's not H2S, it's some kind of the oxidation, like a ferrum, like a rusting process, uh, something like this at the the official, the company mines. So we didn't continue our explore here, but we go to the, the private tunnel. Yeah. Okay. So we continue? Yep. Mm, okay. So actually, for the mines, we I mean we have a uh, start to study, not just study. I mean we have looked for another mines called the uh, gold mines at the route. So we, we did some study about this area, and then I did go to the site visit, so called site visit to the this area. But the, somehow the company have been closing down, then they cannot do the mining anymore. But they have uh, they they get the area already. And then maybe there is a, the poisonous, they use the cyanide to use in the water. Ah. So they don't allow people to go near the, the, the lake. So actually here is quite potential to do exploration and then possible to discover some gold inside here. Yeah, doctor, you want to add anything? Not really, I think if I, I, yeah. I think go, yeah. Okay. So this is one of the one we, we we go to study but not yet explore. So we go to the Tasikanil. 
So Tasikani is one of the artificial lake made here. For the okay, doctor will explain this later. <laughs> Much better than me, I think. So here Tasikani actually is a tourism place. There is a Kala Century, some other tourist cave around. But uh, the people here, they didn't really spend much time to explore the underwater cave. So we did discuss and then we go with together. And then I think Adnan also in the team. I'm not sure whether he's here. So we explore and then we managed to find some, one, some cave here. So this is one of, the, one of the cave entrance. So we need to take the boat and then travel far inside the, the, the place. Uh. I think better, I let doctor explain. Uh. Doctor can explain better this place. Hello <laughs> there. Hello doctor. Hello, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, this limestone uh, where the cave are found is a Permian limestone. So they are about 280 million years ago. Uh, they are rich in fossil, fossiliferous, uh, in fossils. And they have been uh, uplifted uh, in the uh, uh, Jurassic Cretaceous, where a lot of cave formation uh, took place. And then uh, they were. Uh, as the dam was built up to more than 100 meters from the from base. So the cave, which is right in the interior, has become flooded. Uh, uh, before that, this place uh, was also used uh, for the archaeological uh, uh, work by the museum, uh, the National Museum. And actually, they have identified uh, places like graveyard. Uh, they identified uh, uh, agricultural area uh, around this area and they also identified the movement of uh, early people in this uh, uh, in this general region uh, so there is archaeological uh, interest in this area and the biologists tell me that the cave fauna are also interesting uh, that these are the, the, the uh, sub aerial cave uh, in the sub uh, aqueous cave they found a lot of fish which are Quite interesting here. Some of the uh, big catfish, and some of the uh, in the upper part of the river, some of the kala, which are very expensive uh, fish uh, to find. But this, uh, the, but where they are found, it was a place where there was agriculture before. So there were a lot of big trees uh, on the ground of the the cave, the underwater cave. So one of the problem that we we found was that. Uh, this, this tree uh, in the several stages of rotting, uh, they can be difficult to, to, to maneuver through. But uh, once you get into the cave, then uh, they are not, uh, you don't find the big trees anymore. So they are interesting and they probably that's something that we need to go back again in future. Okay, thank you. So there is some the uh, underwater video. So after about thirty meter, so below there is a has to S layer. So this is the has to lay after the has to s layer part about 30 plus meter okay wait, uh, so we are moving to the Kinta valley so Eric you want to take over Okay. Okay, so I share my screen. Yeah. 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 
they have to close first. Oh, I have to close. Okay. Come. Yeah. Can you see the screen? Yep. Yes, okay. So, okay. So, this is the area. Wait, yeah. Okay, the Kinta Valley is uh, in a Perak state. So, this is the Gunung Nano. And beside here, you can see it's always a quarry park. So, the Gunung is no more. So, <coughs> in Perak state, we have met a team. There is a dry cave. Cave uh. the name I, is. I, I cannot see your screen now. Uh. Is it my problem? Is it my problem? I okay. can see the screen but cannot see the picture. Oh, okay. I can see the wait, screen. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Problem with you. <laughs> it's like I try again. After you share your screen, you share your window screen. So if you want to share the pictures, you have to change the mode to share the, the pictures again. Okay. Or the easiest way, you share the whole desktop. Share the whole desktop. Mm -hmm. Okay. Share the screen now. You can see the picture? Yes. yes. Yep. Okay. Okay, here this one is the Gunung Nano. It's the, on the Perak state. It's, sorry, yeah. So it's away from Kuala Lumpur around 200 kilometer. And you can see in here, the green color, this one is the Gunung Nano. And all those white color is a uh, quarry part means it's already the land is owned by the quarry company. So they start to build some stone, the uh, granite stone, or some limestone. I think in Malaysia, the mostly the stone company is from Kintai Valley, means the Perak State. And here you can see some little green color dot. This is all the cave area have some water or maybe a lake that is made by a group of the cave, the dry cave, dry cave cave. The name is uh, Inta Valley Wash. Show you the photo. Can you see the picture here, this one? The space Facebook page. Okay, so we can go to this area to explore the cave, underwater cave, or find the potential cave. It's all the this group of the caver they help a lot because on this place, normally the local people that don't allow the other state people to come in their place. So they are the local people. So every time they they usually to get the permission from the landowner or from the quarry company to, to allow us to go in for explorer. So this one I have to give them the big thanks for that to help us to explore a lot in Kinta Valley. So in Perak, they have a lot of the cave temple. The famous te temple, I think, is the Perak cave temple and the uh, Sampotong. Also, is uh, used for the Buddha cave or maybe the Thai amulet cave. So a lot of like this cave in Perak state. 
So when we went to explore the new cave, the difference is they don't allow us to go in because if we go in to find something, maybe to get a nice cave to explore, so they will lost the chance to get the cave for the temple use. So this is the what we're facing is that lah. Okay, so I will talk about the recently the expo the blue hole. The first is the blue hole. Blue hole. Okay, I share you guys a video. You guys can see a video now. Can I? Okay, this is the first cave we found in Kinta Valley there. There is a cave that on built for the temple use. So we have been here to two times to see the cave and we found this pond. But in this pond, we have to go down. Uh, I think from now, I stand to the water is around three meter to five meter deep. So we have to use the ladder and the single root technique to to assess inside the water. So we decide to do that and we prepare everything to gear up, to setting all the ladder, the line, and carry all the stuff, go in the cave. It take around maybe two hours. And when Lee to jump down, the dive is no more than 10 minutes. <laughs> Means the left and the right and the right side have no passage we can go through. It's very, very small. Even the human without the equipment also, we cannot to go through that path. So we, we can, we believe this, they have a passage to the other end, but since the passage is narrow, so we just give up this exploration. So this is the, how we setting up everything. And the cave is, what you see is, is the big only, left to right. So another cave we explore is this one is Gua Ai. So Gua Ai is beside a quality company actually. So the other end, you can see pond here. Another end is a quarry company. They own the land and they are doing their quarry there now. So we have to go into the search the passage from this other end because this other end is not belong to any people so anyone you can access there so me and Lee and try to, to access here this is the guai the the rock area and you can see the all the rock the those people standing the rock is the from the quarry company because the other side is they are on doing the quarry so all the rock sometimes will drop here so we just explore this cave on Sunday. Make sure the quarry company, they are not working. If not, maybe we have some danger on there. So this is the, some picture. So we decide to go in. Actually, this water is quite clear. You can see the bottom part and some fish on there. Yeah, I think this is a video. But the inside the cave is the green latte water. So actually Kinta Valley, all the cave we explore, I think 90% all is the green latte water, the visibility. No more than three meters. So in this cave, we found the passage we can through the another end. But on the another end, the quarry company, maybe the rock and they use some soil to close it, that entrance. So we cannot pass through that. When we go into the end, they have very narrow place and they, you, we can see some rock to and stuck there. So we cannot continue the, the 
exploration again. And this Gua Ai is only one passage we found. A lot of fish there. And one of the fish they call Sambarau is a lot there also. It's the, I think they say it's the expensive fish. Can you guys see the video smooth or maybe necking? Uh, not really smooth, but it's okay. Okay. You know it's okay. And when they are, when we go into the narrow place, the water is become the zero visibility. Okay, this is a guai. So beside the guai, so this cave is so we stop exploration at there. And beside the guai, we have found another cave is a uh, gua ikan, means it's the fish cave. Uh, why they name it is uh, as a fish cave, I'm not really know, but I think because beside there has a fish farming there. So we just maybe they just take a name on that. So on this area, you can see they have a very clear water there, but the water is very shallow. We only, it's a dry cave area now. So we just walk in to search, and inside they have a lot of the passage. This is the one of the photo, um, Lee ticket. They have a passage under there. You can see the left bottom. They have a hole there. But on the bottom there, a lot of the mark there. So make the entrance is very small. So we plan to dive to explore the next time. So we have to find a way to how to maybe dig out the mark or something like that. But water is uh, cool. If water is cold and the water is very clear there. I think the water temperature is around 27 or 28 around there. And they're also using this water to supply for the fish farming. It's a very clear water there. So you can see some part is the water level is until my chest area. This is the, another passage, but this one is uh, super small, unless you have to bring the machine to break the rocks. Okay. So they have some part, but this part is the inside the, the photo lead to it, beside the, the entrance there. So you can see, actually there, we believe have the passage for the go in. This is the Gua Ikan, the fish cave, they name it. Okay, so most of the cave is like this. They're using for the temple use. Okay, this is the all the Guno Nano. And some dry cave, we found some dry cave is very nice. They have a lot of the pillar, the big pillar, and the stalactites, the mine. This photo is from the Kinta Valley Wash, the group cable. They go every weekend to search the new cave for us. Okay, this is the Dasecha Min, Lee mentioned before. So this picture is the last time we have an event with them. Um, actually this event, they want to famous this mirror lake to stop the quarry company to continue bombing the rocks. Because beside, from the left hand side, beside the cave is the quarry company place. So we invite us to come and explore the underwater, see we can find some, maybe the old time mining, because they say, oh, last time they have some illegal mining here, but after we search the whole lake, we cannot find anything except the rubbish, a lot of rubbish there. Okay. Okay, this is the passage main, it's the mirror lake Lee mentioned before. Okay, the, actually this cave is very nice. Uh, and surrounded by all the cave. 
and this is the entrance. Um, like Lee, this this cave actually Lee and Doctor they explored few years ago. Last time they can shoot away to park their car in here, at this entrance here. After this entrance, I think this entrance is around fifty meter. Then you will see the lake. But this time now, because the quarry company they don't want to a lot of the people to go in, because they have um doing works every day. So they block the outside the way. They use some rock to block the way. So you have to park in your vehicle at outside and walk, I think, 30 minutes to this entrance to enter the mirror lake. This is from the mirror lake area to look outside. This is a man-made. I think this is built from the government to make a place for people to hang around, something like that. Okay, this is the author. Last time me and Lee explored here and we get attacked by them. <laughs> Maybe we, as uh, the nest in here, in there. Okay, this is the video about the mirror leak. And it's the event, the time, and the star, News they have um, do a nice video for us. Uh. So this is the entrance to the cave, to the lake. So last time I go with doctor for the first time to dive here before this event. So we managed to find the entrance here. But due to the visibility, so we didn't push forward. But for this time when we come here, I go back to the same, same dive site. So actually it cannot go further. So we do another search again. It seems like there's no very long passage down here. This lake, after I think three to five meters, the water is starting to clear. So how long does it go in the, in the? Um, I think we just go inside. I think ten to twenty meter, so there's no way to go in again. And this part, um, public had to access here because the, the land is owned by the uh, quarry company. So every time when we come here, we have to get the permission for the, from the quarry company. So last time also the Kinta Valley Wash, they get the permission from them. So they agree. So we just can do that exploration on there. So you can see the site is the quarry company. Okay. Okay. Uh, give me three minutes. I can summarize stuff in Thai. Okay. Okay. Yeah. ก็วันนี้นะครับคุณอีริกนะครับดรอาซาฮาแล้วก็คุณลีนะครับก็เริ่มจะเล่าถึงว่าที่เขาไปพยายามหาถ้ำโดยเขาเริ่มไปจากบริเวณที่เป็นถ้ำทางตอนเหนือครับแล้วก็พูดถึงที่เขาไปในเหมืองสกีที่ก็มีรูปภาพเหมืองมาเรื่อยๆอย่างในเหมืองที่แกเขาก็ไปเจอสองสองเหมือนเป็นสองเหมืองเป็นเหมืองที่แบบเป็นของพับริกแล้วก็เหมืองที่เป็นของบริษัทเอกชนนะครับแล้วก็อันนี้เขากำลังพูดถึงในบริเวณ
แอเรียอันหนึ่งซึ่งเขาเจอเคฟในบริเวณนี้แล้วก็มีมีคนมาสนใจเยอะมากแต่ว่าก็ไม่ได้ถ้ำที่เขาเจอก็ยังไม่ได้ไปเข้าไปลึกเท่าไหร่แต่ว่าตะกี้ดูแล้วน้ำสวยมากครับแล้วก็เอ่อตอนที่ผมดูอุณหภูมิน้ําก็ค่อนข้างใกล้เคียงกับเมืองไทยแล้วก็เมื่อกี้ก็พูดถึงเอ่อทะเลเหมือนเป็นเขื่อนอันนึงคล้ายๆกับคล้ายๆกับเมืองไทยที่เราดํากันแล้วก็เอ่อก็เจอถ้าที่มันมันจมอยู่ในนั้นแล้วก็ลงไปเล็กๆมันก็จะมีถ้าใครดูมาเนี่ยมันจะมีเลเยอร์ที่มีเหมือนมีกลิ่นก๊าซไฮโดรซัลฟาซึ่งมันเป็นออกมาจากที่แบคทีเรียย่อยต้นไม้ข้างล่างนะครับโอเคตอนนี้ผมเชิญผมผมผมไม่ได้แปลเยอะมากเพราะว่าส่วนใหญ่เขาจะเหมือนแบบเปิดรูปให้ดูแล้วก็บรรยายรูปไปเรื่อยๆก็น่าจะเข้าใจกันง่ายอยู่แล้วนะครับโอเคเอ่อ please take us somewhere if you want โอเค doctor anything you want to share about the t a s i c h e m i n the lake mirror lake oh have to Iron mine, uh, and what they did was the the the, the entrance that you saw were the edit uh, from the outside uh, into the into the mine area, and the lake itself was part of the the mine. So uh, when it, it uh, was that's why it was in the center of the the limestone area, uh, but the mining stopped after the Second World War, and it has since been. Uh, Uh, develop into other quarry site uh, in that area, a picnic site on the on the lake, as well as some farm uh, fish farm. I think on uh, on the, the 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 north side of the of the lake. Uh, I think that's all that I, I can add for the area. Okay, Lee. Uh, I'm going to show the sinkhole. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I I stop the screen share. Okay. Share. Okay. So this is one of the the entrance we found. It's kind of a sinkhole. So here the water is 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 the clear. I would say. So the when this this hole you keep going down straight to about seventy meters. So after that, I see a chamber, but somehow it been blocked outside. Uh, very tight restriction. Maybe we need to dig out some of the mud, or maybe need to break something before we can enter into that chamber. So in the beginning, it look very promising. We all go all the way down. The water is clear here. I think this one is the only one we found the clear water in Kintawei, right? Yeah, yeah. So far, so far. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I think we stop just here. So somehow in the front there is a restriction. I think we can pass through it. Just need to do something. So the next I'm going to show you. I mean, we did some uh, cave survey, kind of uh, using a laser scan method. Let me see where already. Okay, so this the machine actually is f i n for my company. We call it using it for 3D laser scan. So one day we took a try to do a cave cave survey. Had do some mapping, but using a laser scanner. So this basically is the output. So we're starting to do some survey, of course, on the land first. So from here, you can like a uh, Google, you can do a 360 panoramic walkthrough. So you can move around to see the cave structure. So we did some experiment here. So the result quite okay. So I mean, we're going to present this one to the the local, the bomba, the, the firefighter. So to show them, maybe they can use this one for their rescue planning in the future for the cave. Because based on this scan, 
you can easily get the measurement, the distance, and so on. And the accuracy is quite high. นี่คุณลีเขาเอาเครื่องเลเซอร์สแกนมาจากที่ออฟฟิศนะครับแล้วก็มาลองสแกนในถ้ำดูแล้วก็ได้ภาพสามมิติในถ้ำเขาก็ไปเสนอกับพวกหน่วยงานความช่วยเหลือว่าถ้าเกิดมันควรจะมีข้อมูลนี้ในการตรวจมีเหตุการณ์ในถ้ำเอาไว้ช่วยเหลือได้ so the one of the reason we do this one because here inside here they have a kind of the how to say is the all kind of the graphic I think they say the what they call the all all kind what they say I cannot I don't know the term ah uh, the term that say the kind of the all kind of painting here, so this is one of the method we capture to help the researcher to keep the information inside here. Yeah. 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 So basically, this is what I, we're going to share today. So you want to add anything, uh, Doctor or Debbie? You want to say anything? Uh, there is a question. Uh, he is asking if you can use this laser technology underwater. Ah, uh, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> not not now. Ah, uh, because this one we use on the surface. I mean, just for the surface for now. Not in the underwater yet. So you actually bought a machine just to do this, or you? No, this is for for my own work because we use this one normally for the the plant for the oil and gas industry to get the accurate measurement for the plant. Then we can bring back the three D three D data and then go back to do the design. So I saw the overseas people is using this the same model. They do the cave survey. So I just try I take this machine and then do go to one of the cave at the Kinta Valley. And with the help of the people there, I mean the friend, so we do this scan. So the result is quite promising, and you got the HDR image. So you can see some some dark area. You can move. You can see around lah. But this one we use for the for the structure. I mean for to do to capture the plant information. You can adjust. Yeah. Like this lah. So, anybody want to add on anything, Doctor? Uh, no, I, I no, 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 for me. Uh, yeah, anything about okay? Then I, I think the 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 laser you may have problem with water. I think one of the problem that uh, laser may not be may not be able to penetrate water. No, no, not, no, not for this one. The not not this one. Yeah, maybe the laser cannot. So we plan yeah. to use the photogrammetry method. Uh, photogrammetry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that one is our next project. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Ah, uh, yes, yeah. the one we going to do that. Ah. Uh. So like this. So I'm not going. Of course, we got other slide here like Sipadan. I think everybody already well known about the Sipadan. So I I don't talk more about here. Yeah. So any people, any any other? If not, that's it for me. That's it for me. There's there's some some question from the from the chat room. Yeah. Can you read the? Yes, uh, um, this is Robin talking. I have a question. Yeah. Um, have you been exploring the Sarawak region? Because I know that there's a very very long cave system yeah. there. Uh, yeah. In Gunung Mulu. Yeah. And I've been looking into it for quite a while. Uh, the the um, how, what what's the name? Key Water Cave. Yes. Uh, have you been there, or are you planning to go there? Ah, uh, I see. I have a mark here. The Gua Mulu. Yeah. It's the Mulu Cave. Actually, my instructor, my early instructor, the open water cave instructor. They are not cave diver yet, so they've been here to train the military. Inside this Gua Mulu, so he told me they dive here. Of course, that time they are not really well equipped with the cave diving kind of a knowledge. He explained me how he dive last time. So actually, there is a cave down here and it's quite huge. But somehow now we are arranging. Actually, we try to contact to the people there to allow us to to dive here. Okay. Yeah, we're doing some arrangement. We discuss with various people, but we have to make a trip to here. <laughs> To, to do a dry cave first, 
to do the adventure cave around the Salawat chamber, they so-called is quite a big chamber. So to know the people there and then open the door for us to, to dive here. Okay. I have write several letters already. So I think due to this COVID time, we, we can't follow up because I, I have quite frequent to fly to this Salawat area. So I did visit some of the, the, the so-called the government people there. So they say ask, they asked me to go to the forestry department to apply. So yeah, I need to do some work uh, before we can okay. go here. Let me know. Yeah, yeah, of course. Lee, do you want to cover a bit about the turtle tomb? The Sipadante? Mm, you, you, you talk. Uh, you talk uh. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, yes, I mean, we cover another part. Is okay. So we have basically go through the Kalam, the Chermin, Sungai Lembing. So that's it. So I will just explain a bit about the tomb. So Turtle Doom is uh, located at Sipadan. It's one of the famous cave, underwater cave. And a lot of uh, turtle skeleton down here. So the dive, the, the entrance is about 20 meter. So from the entrance, you can see the signboard, the blocking to, to give a warning not to go inside the cave. Yeah. So this is the underwater footage inside the Turtle Doom. Yeah, you want to say anything, Eric or Doctor, to explain about the cave? I I'm not so good to explain about the cave. Ah. how the uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, the the cave here is actually between uh, the volcanic underlying volcanic and the limestone, and that's why the 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 the, uh, uh, the cave quite a lot of them are horizontal because the volcanic rock are basically horizontal. Uh, and uh, what is interesting here is that the we did that that uh, that, that twenty meter, uh, opening at twenty meters. You get uh, inside the cave. You get the water level uh, rising up or less than ten meters. So it's actually going up and down, and with a lot of air pockets. That's why you you can get uh, uh, air traps uh, in, in those caves. Uh, the the other interesting uh, thing about about this cave is that uh, this cave uh, cave system. Besides the main main cave, there are also smaller caves on the side, which are, are smaller, but uh, they also have uh, interesting features in them. Uh, but they are a bit, a bit narrower. Now, generally, because this water is seawater, uh, at, the, at the cavern, you have a lot of fish in the cavern. But once you get into the cave, uh, you, don't get, uh, you don't get that many fish anymore, except for there are one or two windows where you get a fish that comes that's very close to the uh, at the surface. Huh? Uh, but they, I think the fish will come in and then they move out. They move out back into the the, the open sea. Uh, what what is nice about uh, about this cave is that uh, you can actually it's a very good training cave. I would say uh, water is generally very clear. Uh, you have uh, visibility in the cave more than uh, 20, 30 meters. So it's at the, and the chambers are really huge inside there. But what the deepest depth, that I think, in that area is about 24, 25 meters. So it's not uh, in terms of depth, it's not much, but in terms of penetration distance, it can be quite big. Okay. I think that's, I can say about that. Okay, I'm going to ask Dr. Azahar to ask Dr. Azahar. He said that ในถ้ำเต่าที่สิบดันที่เราไปกันเนี่ยมันเป็นเป็นถ้ำที่เกิดขึ้นจากทั้งเกิดจากทั้งทั้งการเกี่ยวข้องกับภูเขาไฟนะครับเพราะมันมีหินที่เป็นหินอาคานีเยอะมากแล้วก็ที่มันสังเกตได้อย่างหนึ่งคือหินอาคานีส่วนใหญ่มันจะถ้ำที่เป็นหินด้วยหินอาคานีส่วนใหญ่มันจะเป็นแนวนอนเป็นฟลัตแบบนี้แล้วก็บางส่วนก็เป็นหินหินปูนก็คือเหมือนเป็นสองอย่างที่ผสมอยู่ด้วยกันแล้วเข้าไปก็เป็นถ้ำที่ค่อนข้างง่ายในการดำครับเข้าไปก็ทางค่อนข้างค่อนข้างใหญ่แต่ว่าคําว่าอาในการดำแปลว่าสําหรับสําหรับนักดำน้ําถ้าที่จะสอนดำน้ำทั่วไปครับเป็นทําที่มีชื่อเสียงโอเคจ้ะ so that's all from me okay I think my part is finish anything we want to talk about Malaysia King or the thing uh, can can you show the the maps again? The the the, the... okay. 
Kill man map. That Lee, I take over the sh- sh- screen. Map, oh. A deep map. Uh. Which map? This map? Yeah, uh, this map, yeah. Okay. Okay. So the interesting part we're going to, to explore is here, the north part. Yeah. This is what we're going to plan to do again. Because here is the border for the Thailand. I think you well, I mean, it's a Satun area here. The cast is uh, from the Satun all the way down to the police. I think we found the difficult part in Expo in Malaysia. The West Malaysia is most place we go, um, those local people and the, maybe the landowner that don't allow us to go in to do any exploration on that. Because there, some parts, they, they are not on the land. They just do some work and the, the land is under government area. So they just do some farming, fish farming, or maybe the vegetable farming. So they don't want us to go in to explore the, uh, the place. So the government will involve them and maybe to take over back the land. This is the most difficult part. So what, what is your guys next? project that you planning to do something in Malaysia? I think it's the Kedah part, the Alor Star part, right, Lee? Yeah, of course that one is part one of it, yeah. And the uh, Lembing, the mines, so we will continue the, we will continue back to, to further the distance. I see. ก็ติดเขาตัวว่าตอนนี้โปรเจกต์ที่เขาเล็งไว้อยู่นะครับอ่าต่อไปคือจะเป็นที่อลอสตาร์ที่ใกล้ๆกับสตูนซึ่งม
because that time they don't mention about the cave name and the location also. Even on Google Earth, you cannot find the location. But if you find, if you search the Google Earth, you can see a lot of a cave there. They have already pinned on that. So that all cave you can go. You can go to for caving and for take, a, take some picture there. That is okay to public. Okay. So are there any sea cave around KK or Miri? So far, we not sure whether there is any sea cave there, but so uh, the only except for the Sipadan, which is located at Tawau. Uh, KK and Biri not likely because they are basically sandstone, so you don't have large cave formation uh, in sandstone. Okay. So, so most of the cave in Indonesia are mostly in the Ipo cast area. So, uh, well, there are several limestone belt. One is the west coast. Uh, you go from Kuala Lumpur, uh, Ipoh, uh, right up to Langkawi, Kedah Perlis. That's the, that is one limestone belt. And there's another major limestone belt right in the center uh, in Pahang area. And then there is the east coast belt, uh, basically in uh, Tengganu. Okay, those are the three main belts uh, of limestone. And that's where the caves, most of the caves are found. Now, in, uh, in Sarawak, uh, I think most people focus on uh, the Deer Park, the Mulu Cave, because that is a tourist area. But actually, the, the biggest limestone is actually in Kuching. It's only about 17 uh, kilometers from Kuching. Uh, and that is a gold mining area. That, that, that's a very large cave in that area. Uh, it's a very well-known cave in that area. But because the focus there is mainly gold mining. So... Uh, Tourism is not that uh, that much focus there, uh, but I've read some reports that you can actually they are, uh, go into some of the underwater caves in that area. Uh, some of the very deep open cast mine uh, is there, but the water has a high content of cyanide, which makes them uh, not suitable for any diving. So, so cyanide is the toxic chemical they use in That's right. mine. Yeah. เคยคิดผมถามอ่าดรสหาว่าตรงไหนที่เราเจอถ้ําบ่อยๆเพราะว่าส่วนใหญ่นะแทบๆเคเอามันจะเป็นหินทรายมันจะไม่มีถ้
cave dive site for for like recreational cave diver like to make because now most of them uh, look like still in the the survey stage. So when are you gonna are you gonna do you have plan to develop into some tourist cave for for recreational cave divers? Uh, in now now we don't have any cave for recreational cave diving in Malaysia. We are still on the survey stage. Yeah. Except Sipadana, I would say. Yeah, <laughs> Sipada, yes. And uh, almost the cave even have the passage. Also, the is the green latte water. The visibility is low than no, not more than three meters. So, it's a not a nice cave la, for now. In now the city. ผมเมื่อกี้ผมถามว่ามันจะมีถ้ําในมาเลเซียที่สามารถเปิดให้ได้ What if somebody want to do cave courses in Malaysia can they do somewhere Now we know we can do it uh, too, too. <laughs> but in, in the west Malaysia is there anywhere you know? I think West Malaysia from and now I think only the Kinta Valley, but we have to get the permission from the quarry company. Uh, the other than that, I think no. Lee, any you suggest? <laughs> any cave? Can do maybe a caven? I think Ipo, I think the Kinta still okay, but not for the Lumbing. The Lumbing is quite I think need a bit advanced and experienced cave diver that only we can do. Yeah, because the Ming is the uh, illegal mining and all the structure, even you cannot hold the rock beside you because even many times we are when I broke out the bubble, so we have a lot of the small rock will fall down on your head. Yeah. I remember got one like like a tin like that fall down. Remember? Yeah, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think not suitable to I mean for for learning. I think Kinta. I think still we can find some cavern area. Even though we want to have a full cave, I think it's possible. I think full cave cannot. I think you need some distance. Ah, uh, not so okay. I mean, Sipadan is still the best. Uh. I think Tase Chemin we can do the cavern course uh. Yeah, <laughs> Tase Chemin full cave uh, not for full cave. Yeah, yeah, cannot be. Right, so any question from anyone? I got one uh, for disabled diver. I think this one Paul can answer much better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Catalina asking if you guys do you guys have some Facebook or oh yes, yes, yes. Actually, yeah, we have um Facebook page. The name is Malaysia Cave Diving Association in Facebook. So you can like our page to follow our page, yeah. For Catherine question, yeah. Okay. So for the disabled diver, um, I think Malaysia now is no. Because a lot of the cave, we get some information from the Kinta Valley Wash, the group. So actually all those caves in Guno Nano is at the dry cave area it explored by the foreigner, I think many years ago. They have some map on that. And some dry cave we have go to go through all the dry cave is, I think it's a bit, hard for the disabled diver lah. because all most most of the cave you have to hiking and maybe you have to um use the single rope technique to going down yeah i think most of the cave water like for cave diving is like that and the water visibility is very bad Okay, there's one more question from me on the dive in the deepest mine. How do you plan for the logistic and how long the travel from the entrance to the water? Um, 
for the deepest mine, okay, uh, logistic, we can use our car to straight away to the the entrance. Just now, we have shown the photo, the tunnel, the Pollock tunnel, yeah, in front there. So, because the entrance is owned by a homestay owner, so we, we have to get, every time we, where we go, we have to get the permission from him. And to the, from the entrance to the water, is actually uh, uh, take a lot of stamina on that because you have to, because it's the illegal kit, uh, the mining area. So you have to ban, half ban your body and carry all the tank to until the in water area, I think is more than 200 meters. Lee? Yeah, about two to 300. Uh. Three to two to 300. Yeah, and some parts, some parts you have to knee down and you have to crawl it, it to go inside to drag all the equipment in. Because when they are closed down, they use some rock to, to close the area. But on the deepest mine, if you take the homestay there, they have a package for you for the tourists to take a look to go inside to uh, take a visit on the how they're inside there. The water is how they take out the water. Yeah, you can do that. Right. Any more? Any more question? Okay, since we have so much time and I, I know that we are talking about the exploration in Malaysia, but I know you have some presentation from your expedition in Indonesia also. So can possibly, can you share about maybe just Indonesia a little bit since we've got time left, Lee. Okay, yeah, wait, uh, wait, wait, wait. Let me see here. <laughs> ขอให้คุณลีกับอีลิกเล่าถึงตอนที่เขาไปอินโดนีเซียกันด้วยครับอืมอ่าโอเคอ่าโอเคกิฟต์มีอะมินิทมีแชร์มาสกรีนโซด
another one is the sea cave, the Topa Soi cave. So this one is located somewhere at the sea. It's kind of the sinkhole and it opened up at about 30 meter, I think 30 meter. Oh, that's, that's the bottom. Yeah. So this cave is quite dangerous. It's not dangerous, you need to follow the, the, the tide. Because the, if the water is sucking in, so we, we have to wait until the water is at the right time. Then only we go in when the water is start to the waterfall is start to pushing us out. So a lot of lobster here. Yeah. So the next one is a Labung Kali. So actually we've been spending quite uh, some time to explore this cave. So recently, we continue our exploration. We have actually found out another, another possible entrance uh, to connection. Uh, because this is the old photo, uh, I don't have a. Uh, I think Paul, I think this one, I think wait, uh, how do I explain? Uh? So we did exploration here quite a few times already. We discover about three main passages to go in. So at our last last exploration during the March before the, the COVID shutdown. So we managed to finish one of the end of the line and we managed to come up from another exit. So from the exit, actually they lead to another two entrance. Actually, it's quite interesting to continue the exploration here. And uh, Paul, remember the, the water making the one, the, the factory that making the water? Yeah, did you come out from the factory exit? Ah, we come out from the factory exit. This stuff from the factory exit is remember there's a door they're closing already. They asked us to continue the dive there. They asked us to dive there. But we didn't dive, but we, we managed to come out from the side. So from the side you go out, you will see another two entrances go inside the in the water. So it's still a long way to go. I don't have a picture here because I didn't prepare for that. This is uh, the old picture for for the during for the last MID the DRT event uh, the for the show. So yeah. So another one is the Gua Air Besa. So this is one of the the nice cave. An easy cave can, I think it's quite suitable for the, I think Indonesia, a lot of cave is suitable for the people to come. The water here is clear and uh, this, there's no I mean they got a big passage. Of course, there is some restriction, but it's nice to do cave diving here. So this one of the cave that we discover is the depth is about 50 meter. So it's quite a nice one. Uh. We we went down to the uh, the deepest part of this cave is was forty seven point five meter. Okay. Expect to go deeper, but it didn't go. Yeah, I reached the bottom there. Yeah. Okay, so there's some um, video under here. Let me see. Uh, So this is quite a deep dive. So we bring a deco tank just to, because we, when we do dive, we don't know how, how deep we're going to go. So we just bring some deco tank to be, to be sure. And in the, in the last trip, we saw the, the Brotula fish, the Brotula cave fish here also. Yeah. Actually, I, we have discovered some, maybe a kind of a new cave fish. It's a yellow one. Shallow one, so, right? Yellow, yellow, yellow one, yellow, yellow color. So we discover the gray color. Yeah. So the lead color is discovered by one of the French uh, France people, France guy, I think it's the Robin instructor. And then we discover another one, it's a yellow one. So that's mean we found three types so far. 
yeah, it's a uh, three types. So basically, this is the the cave. I think it's quite nice and good for for teaching here. I think for like this this dive site, right? <laughs> yeah. So another one is a uh, we call the how you say in English ah uh, the rock that have been splitted ah uh, how you say batu tebela uh, splitted rock cave the rock have been splitted ah uh, yeah so this actually is a cavern area it's a cavern ah uh, so here it's very nice it's very nice to take photo and then we have we saw the the red prawn. So this red point is quite funny. You can, you can have some footage here. So it's very, how say, scenic to take picture if you want here. And it's a very easy dive. It's just a cavern. And uh, one of the highlights is about the prone here. So the prone is swimming upside down. It's not just a one point doing like this. It's all the prone is doing like this. It's, it's very cute. Ah. Yeah. But after about sunset time, you can see the stream is become back to the normal. We're not sure what they are trying to do now. Maybe they are looking for some food. We don't know. But after, I think, a bit going to sunset, it go back to the normal. I mean, go back to like a normal swim. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So basically, I didn't prepare much on the Indonesia. Because today, talk about Malaysia. So basically, this is a slide. Yeah. Oh, we just, we got, just got extra time. So. Yeah, I know. No, yeah. Sorry, sorry for that. Right. Yeah. Yes, this from me. Yep. Thank you so much. So yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks. Yeah. Any question? Any things to share? Anyone? Eric, you want to share anything, Doctor? Doctor? Uh, a lot of the uh, fish uh, from the. Uh, uh, near the entrance of the cave, they also swim upside down. You see a lot of them swimming upside down. What the thing that strike me then? But once they get into the cave, they all. Uh, oh, once you get into the the, the cave side, they're all swimming uh, upright. It's just that that position. I think I'm not sure if it's disorientation or, or not, but it's something that I've I've seen uh, fish doing that. So it's uh, Yeah, just just wonder. But after a bit near to the sunset time, then he become back to normal. <laughs> because we spend quite, quite some time there, then we, after some time, then we say, he go back to normal again. Uh, I'm not sure what, what is the, the problem at yeah. that time. <laughs> <laughs> we, don't, we don't know. Uh, yeah. it's, it's quite interesting. Yeah. Uh. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. Let's see, uh... Any question? Robin, you have any question? No, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to see what's going to happen in Sarawak. Hmm. Yeah, yep. I'm also looking forward. Uh. So, like this, so I just show the, the, the fish. Uh, the fish, uh. that's the fish. So that's the backside. So this is the, the fish we are talking about just now. It's the same, I mean, look kind of the, the cave fish we found. So this is the yellow one. How deep did you find? Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, you can find inside the cave, you can find outside the cave. Sometimes you can find it's about maybe 15, 20 me, you can see one of two, but you can find at the shallow part also. I see. Yeah. Uh, depends on the timing, timing. So this is, this is not, this look like a Cremona, Cremonas, but, but I got the front one, but I haven't, I haven't taken out. I got the front part. But the type is same as the white color one. Uh. Only the color is Lo different. Looks similar. Looks similar. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
but this one the the eyes the the eyes is much you can see clearer they have got the eyes but the net mm. color one some got eyes some don't have eyes depends i mean yeah so the, the the red color one is is also different from the one that we saw together right yeah it's different it's the i think discovered by one i cannot remember his name here he's discovered from the the french robin's instructor robin may know so he he point he give us quite a lot of information about this area yeah okay so basically they one from me yeah let, let me ask one we, we happen to have one fish expert here uh, ah good dr. good good dr piatje uh, we we are you here cup my <laughs> so yeah, it, it, I'm not, I'm not an uh, expert on on fish, but I I just know a little bit of it up there. <laughs> so we, we actually saw I mean three kind of fish that the different in color, but they live in different depth in the caves. So what do you think about the uh, relationship among them? Or well, first of all, is that the cave in uh, Indonesia that we we're talking about right now? Yeah, we are. We actually we somehow we go to Indonesia. Yeah. Okay, uh, I don't know much about the fish in that area, but it's interesting myself also that like we see a variety of the uh, the color of the fish in a similar type in the same genus of the fish, but uh, depend on the distance, uh, I believe that the red like the, the brightest color of the fish is probably kind of like just the accidental. They might just slip in i'm i'm not so sure about that um at least from my point of view and my experience that i found the fish in the uh, cave in florida united state um we if we're going to claim that it's actually live completely in the cave i i interested to see that it's actually have a color that we can actually see because most of the time if it's a cave dwelling creature with times, uh, all the pigment on this uh, scale will be will become colorless or white that we can see. So, but because it's uh, looks like it's a sea cave, so I think it might be just a chance that the fish just got trapped inside the cave and just you know try to survive in the area. But that's just my uh, opinions on, on that. I, I'm I'm not convinced that it's grew up in the cave so far but that is just my opinion i see okay any question about cave in indonesia or, or malaysia sorry since, since, you're gonna, since you're gonna come back to this area soon you're gonna we can, you gotta find some cave to dive yeah after this after this COVID. Right, so any question, any comments so far from anyone? All right, so if there are no question, uh, Dr. Asaha, Elik Tans, and uh, Lee, could you please maybe sum up and then leave some word for us for the night so we can keep dreaming, get a good night's sleep over the cave? <laughs> Well, I think uh, cave diving in Malaysia is still very much at infant stage. Uh, we do have some promising uh, place to look for, for new cave, but then uh, a lot of work needs to be done, uh, especially in uh, getting things organized. In fact, most of the caves are actually away from any uh, dive, dive area, dive site. So, Getting them organized is difficult, getting the tanks there. Uh, and then if you have to stay more than a few days, then you need somewhere else to refill the tank. Uh, and if you need oxygen, then again, oxygen needs to be uh, to work on that. Uh, then on the physical side, uh, the cave so far have not lent itself uh, to much exploration. They are 
very limited that we can go. There's limitation in, in, in the way that we can penetrate the caves. Uh, but uh, still, we work on it uh, and hopefully somewhere we'll find a breakthrough. I think that's from my side. I see. Uh, Lee? Yeah. Uh, as normal, I mean, it's, it's my patient. We keep the patient on. So to discover the undiscovered. So the, we are going to concentrate on more on the archaeology rich kind of the cave. We have identified some already. So this way we are going to go ahead. Uh, Eric. Yeah, like what doctors say is in Malaysia, in West Malaysia, um, all the cave we explore is still on the survey stage. So I don't think it's, um, it's suitable for the cave, the recreation of cave diving now. And we hope one day we can get a nice cave, like maybe Indonesia, Mexico, Thailand, but, Thailand. <laughs> but not Krabi. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I hope we can find it. And I think in Kintabari area, yes, they have a cave in there, but still need to take time to look for it. And mostly now all the cave, we explore the cave is the, all is the green latte water visibility so not like a, what your imagine is a, like a mexico cave the mineral water visibility is now not not for now in west malaysia it what we explore or done yep. so yeah that's my part yep. please uh, keep looking and please share to us sometime. yeah yeah sure นะครับผมก็ฝากเป็นคำถามสุดท้ายว่าฝากให้เขากล่าวสุดท้ายว่าโปรเจกต์ต่อไปทำยังไงก็คือตอนนี้ถ้ำที่เจอในมาเลเซียส่วนใหญ่ก็จะเป็นถ้ำในเหมือนแบบยังอยู่ในระดับแค่การสำรวจนะครับยังไม่ได้เปิดให้ทุกคนเข้าไปดำได้แล้วก็ยังยังไม่ได้เจอแบบถ้ำสวยๆใสๆแต่ว่าเขาก็ยังไม่ยอมแพ้ในการค้นหาไปเรื่อยๆนะครับโอเค so for tonight thank you so much uh, Dr a s a h a r Uh, Lee and Eric. Oh, by the way, yeah. we got some. All right. any, is there any question? Okay, we already done all, all the question. So thank you for tonight. Thank you, Eric, Lee, and Dr. Azhar again for sharing us your experiences on the uh, caves in Malaysia. And I hope we could dive together sometime soon. And if yeah, you, <laughs> if you guys haven't dived cave yet, you have to do it. Yep, you can do in Thailand, you can do in Indonesia, you can do in, in Malaysia. Right. Yeah, you can do with Paul. And of course, you're going to be a cave instructor one day. Right. Uh, just for some advertisement for tomorrow. So tomorrow we have one, actually one cave diver, but he mm -hmm. is also a scuba instructor. He will talk about the, uh, the dive site in Taiwan, because we never... I mean, most of us, we never know where to dive in Taiwan. Uh, it's not only uh, not only cave diving, but we just generally uh, recreational diving in Taiwan. ตอนนี้นะครับก็เป็นพูดเรื่องการดำน้ำในไต้หวันนะครับก็เวลาเดิมครับโอเคครับวันนี้ผมพลาดเรื่องการแปลขออภัยด้วยนะครับเพราะว